We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or go over to the website and head to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Well, the best way for questions to come through is through the website. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. It's the last Wednesday of the month, which means it's time for us to answer your gaming and game night questions live. I'd like to welcome you all to Thanksgiving. Today is Thanksgiving Eve in some parts of the world, and if you are celebrating that holiday, I do wish you a happy one. I indeed, happy holidays to everyone as we enter into this season filled with something for just about every religion, non-religion out there. Whatever you choose to celebrate, be safe and be kind. Now, all right, so do we have any questions from the lobby besides what coffees are you drinking so far? That is the one I saw so far. So I am drinking a Muskoka wolf head. It's a, it's got a picture of a wolf on the cup. Uh, it's a medium dark. It's decent coffee. It's all right. It's it's coffee coffee. Nothing fancy. Nothing nothing flavored. It's it's drinkable. It's good. It's not great. Uh, while I am drinking a Friendly's uh, caramel swirl, uh, that uh, is is nice. I'm not a, I'm not a caramel fan, but uh, I'm I'm enjoying it, and it smelled great brewing it. So uh, there is that. Uh, now, we do have a comment earlier from Twitter. Kenny Crum, at Kenyon Crum, asked, Do you have a recommendation for a party game to take to Thanksgiving for people that don't normally play board games? My go-to is usually cash and guns and no thanks. All right, we've covered uh, games that are good for experienced gamers when playing with non-experienced -gamer, non gamers, and we talked about light games to bring out, so... This is going to overlap a couple of things we talked about previously. Uh, in this case, what you're looking for are games that, especially at a holiday party, I wouldn't worry about the gamer games at all. In this case, I think you're trying to get people to game. You're getting people to play together and to enjoy a good time and to socialize. So you're going to want games where you can do that. You can socialize, you can talk, you can hang out. You can probably have some drinks, maybe some food and play at the same time. So not everyone's just focused on the game. So in, in my opinion, in general, unless you, you really want to try to sell it, leave the gamer games at home in this case and stick to mainly the party games. Cash and Guns is one. I don't know about that one. I, that, that depends on your family. Maybe that's an American thing, but a bunch of people pointing phone guns at each other wouldn't go over well at any of my family parties. But No Thanks is a great suggestion. That's a good um, pass-the-buck style game where you're playing cards really quick to teach. Uh, one of the go-to ones, you know what, I'll start off with games I've actually introduced to my family or my extended family. One of the first that was a huge hit with our family was The Great Del Moody. Uh, this is from, I'm drawing a blank on his name, the guy who made Magic the Gathering, Richard Garfield. Uh, actually, a game I think he wrote before it was originally published by Woods of the Coast. I don't know if they still publish it now. Um, we actually got it at that giant mall that's over in Detroit when it first opened up. Or not in for the Mall of America or whatever that huge mall. Uh, this is a version of President or that other word that we don't say because we're a family show, um, where you are playing tricks of cards and you have to play the same number of cards as the person before you, and a lower number beats it. So if I play four four, or sorry, that's a bad example. If I play four thirteens, the next player could play four nines, and the next player could play four fives, and then the only thing that's going to beat that is someone who plays four fours. And at the end of every round, the what you're trying to play all the cards in your hand, and when you're done, you actually rearrange your seating, and that's where the fun comes in. Is you have the great Del Moody, a lesser Del Moody, you have a lesser peon and a greater peon, and the roles those have, and all the other players are merchants and have some little special trading rules. And after every round, everyone gets up and moves around, so the great Del Moody gets like the head of the table. Uh, we used to play with silly hats that people wore as well. It's it, it was a lot of fun. Plus, it's just a really basic tricky game. If you're playing with people who play card games, right? Who know tricks and no trump and stuff like that they're all good all right um uh, my my family doesn't game much on uh <laughs> on, on holidays so uh i can't i can't offer much into this one all um, right other ones that have worked good for us then um concept has been really good uh that that worked well but that took later in the night like once people have already kind of I already met up with everyone they haven't talked to in a long time and had their big conversation and are now kind of looking for something to do because I found during concept, this is a game where you're probably not going to chat a lot during play. You're going to be focused on the board yelling out answers, or you're going to be the person giving the clues. So that is one you're going to focus. 
Uh, one surprise thing that fell completely flat with my family was uh, code names. Code names did not work. I refused to bring that out again. I brought that out on Christmas Eve one night, or not Christmas Eve, a good Christmas party with my mom's family. And I, wow, that that was too complicated for my family. They just could not get concept, didn't understand why you would give more than one clue, did not like it at all. Oh, concept or code names? Code names, sorry, code names. Okay. Code names. Concept went over great. Code names, terrible, flat, absolutely horrible. Um, any of the, you're like, really, your, your telestrations would be great. Plays up to 12 people. You need the 12 people party pack. You need the big set. A dexterity games are extremely popular. The problem is they usually don't play big groups. But if you're playing ones that are quick enough, you can just kind of rotate through the different groups or have multiple tables going. Like this is why Jenga is often popular, right? Like, and I, there's nothing wrong with Jenga. I personally would bring out hamster roll or go cuckoo or something like that. Again, light, easy to teach, um, no real pre-planning, strategizing, no AP, just take your turn, do your thing, more activities than games. Yeah. Solid plans. All right, so we got a first chat, uh, question from the chat room. Poncho72 asks, do you guys plow through a rule, rule book to learn a game or watch a video or a combo of both? I'm a rule book person, 100%. To me, that's part of the, I like reading rule books. I actually enjoy reading rule books. I think it goes back to my RPG days. I've read way more role-playing games than I'll ever run or play because I just enjoy reading them to see how each author does things differently and how the mechanics are handled different. And that spills over to board games. Like, I, I'm actually excited to read the rules for a game to see, hey, how's this going to handle it? How's this game going to do deck building? How's this game going to handle that? So I actually really like reading rule books. I also find I absorb better from rule books. Um, I'm guessing that's probably just part of my age, right? Like, I grew up having to study. I went to university. I read a lot of textbooks. I know how to annotate. Like, it's just how I learned was that way. References, reading references, not watching stuff on the internet. So that's what I'm used to. Now, what I do is I often read a rule book for a game like when I get it. That's part of me. It's part of the excitement. Well, now we tend to unbox them first. So soon after I've unboxed the game, is I'm probably sitting on the couch or at a coffee shop reading rule books. But then I don't play the game right away. So it usually takes a couple of weeks before I can actually get the game out to an event or even just my Monday night game group. That's where I'll usually watch a video just to refresh my memory on what I read. Plus, every now and then there's something that's not clear in a rule book that'll be more clear in a video. So initially plow through the rule book, literally cover to cover. I don't even like picking ahead. Like I know people when they read role playing rule books will like skip to the DM session or skip to the spell session. I literally will start on page one and read to page 399, one in a row. And that's why a lot of rule books, I die out in the skills section because I get bored of reading all the different skills and how everyone handles. How, how far can you jump this time? Is it your heart height times 1.5 or is it an abstract number? Is it based on your strength? Like I'll die out at that point, but it's always plow through. And then as a refresher, I'll watch a video. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big rule book fan. Absolutely. Uh, whenever possible, I'll read the rule book. The only time I defer from that is I find a lot of the board game arena pieces. Because you don't have the game in front of you and you don't have the pieces to interact with, uh, that's where I find the videos make a huge difference. Because mm -hmm. if I've got a board game and I can pick up a piece and I can look at it, and if they refer to something in a board game, you can actually see and feel those things. That 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 manual makes a whole lot or that uh, makes a whole lot of sense. Instruction booklet. Whereas on board game arena, because you don't have any way to really interact with the pieces or the board or the setup, uh, you're relying so much on the computer. I find then watching the videos and watching someone actually set it up and and you know, living vicariously through their setup uh, yeah. makes a huge difference in my ability to play games better on Board Game Arena. I wonder with the videos, if I do it less, I used to always play, not play solo, but set the game up. So I would read the rule book and then I would go downstairs to my gaming room and set the game up and touch all the pieces. I find I don't do that as much now. So I'm, I'm wondering if it's because I've, I've now had the videos to watch to do that. But like role playing games too, that was something else I did. Before I ever ran any role playing game, I would sit down and make a character myself. And I always found I learned way more trying to make that character than I did just reading the book or trying to run it. Because once you start making a character, that's when you realize just what you have to reference. That I need to jump back to page 70 to find these rules. And I need to jump here and then I need to look at the looks of list of feats. Board games aren't usually complicated enough for that. Fair enough. Uh, now, uh, Ryan asks, uh, are there any terrible rule books you want to call out? 
uh, Shafosa. That still will, will always be. If you read my review on Shafosa, I complain about it a lot. Shafosa was terrible, though I did play that. There was one worse. Um, there was a miniature company out of France called Rackham, and they made a game called Confrontation. And at the time, they were the most beautiful miniatures I have ever seen in my entire life. Like, they they were slightly larger scale. They were one of the first companies to use 32 millimeter instead of 30, which was the game's workshop scale, or 28, which was the old D&D scale. So they were bigger, so they had more detail. Um, they were one of the first companies to use resin, but these were metal, the ones I had. Just amazing miniatures. And they got some of the best painters in the world to paint them. And back when Cool Mini or Not was a miniature company and not a board game company, uh, I saw these and they blew me away. Well, they put out a board game called Nemesis. And I got to admit, it was pretty close to a knockoff of, of um, Space Hulk, as you could get. Uh, it was a board, used D6s, you were using miniatures on the board, two-player only, spawn points. It really did seem like they're, they're really going for that Games Workshop feel. But being a company from France, I don't know who did their translate, but I honestly think it might have been Google. Like, it might have been Babblefish back in that day. So it was really... Bad. Like, so bad that I could not figure out how to play. And to be honest, now I could probably look it up and maybe someone has an actual play video. But when that game came out, this is a few years back, the internet was around, but it wasn't, you didn't have Board Game Geek. Or I didn't know Board Game Geek existed, whatever that happens to be. So I couldn't figure out how to play it. I literally gave up. Which wasn't bad because the miniatures were amazing. So I kind of bought the game mainly for the miniatures, but it would have been nice to at least try the game. It's one I should probably Google at this point because I, I basically forgot about it. It's one that should probably be in our pile of shame count because I do technically still own it. All right. So uh, here we go. Uh, Black Friday, crazy shopping time. You have yep. a $10 price, dim a price limit for a Secret Santa gift exchange. What game do you buy? Hmm. I'm trying to think of what's 10 bucks. Would have been Dixit yesterday. <laughs> Uh, it's it's okay. definitely tougher in Canada than it is in the states. I'm yeah, sure. th that was in the U.S. It was it was yeah. it was nine ninety nine yesterday. It was crazy nine ninety nine all day yesterday, for some reason for Dixit. Ah, uh, with ten bucks. So I bought for a seat. It depends who I'm exchanging with. So I have bought now twice Racco for a Secret Santa gift exchange with non gamers, because that's it's a decent enough game. It's not overly complicated. It's a I don't know if anyone knows Racco, but it's you get it. You have a rack full of numbered cards and you have to try to put them in order. And when you you always throw away a card and get a new card, and you have to put the new card so it's numeric, and the first person to get their entire rack in numeric order wins. It's it's old. It's like possibly even earlier than the 60s. It's at least 70s game. It was a game my parents taught me to play that we had as a kid. That was my go-to, because like everyone already had Uno, so I wouldn't grab Uno. Um, another one that I hear is fantastic and only cost 10 bucks is Monopoly Deal. I would probably buy that blind based on the number of people who have told me that's amazing. Um, Actually, that was one. That was lot. the one I tried to get during the July Amazon sale. I tried to buy it because they had it on for five yeah. bucks, and Amazon was so badly broken by by volume or whatever. I could yeah, not check out, and yeah, I ended up I, not I said, buying I, it. I have heard it's good. I've heard Monopoly Deal is actually really good. Uh, love Letter. I, I don't really like Love Letter, but it's in that right. But the um, Empire Engine, if you can find it, that was an AEG game in a little bag. Uh, again, I think that was MSRP 15, though, not 10. 10's, 10's tight. Yeah, 10 is very tight these days. 10 is very tight. Nowadays, nowadays I think most uh, Secret Santas are aiming more for the $20 range, I think, just because it gives you so much more flexibility yeah. than uh, trying to fit something into that $10. This is off the top of my head. If you give me Google for a minute and I go on Amazon, I'm sure I could find some better suggestions. But off the top of my head... Uh... Yeah, I said Monopoly Deal is the one I keep hearing a lot of people, and it, it has been that cheap. Again, I don't think the MSRP is that low. Right. Now, Redmi uh, Ryan's talking about News at 11 is uh, half off at BoardGameBliss.com. I have to say, you know, I've been, I've been keeping an eye on Board Game Bliss because I've been hearing so many great things about their prices, but they don't keep a lot of stock. Oh. And, and that is, yep. is really kind of the downfall I'm, I'm struggling with on... Uh, on, on going to board game bliss because every time i've gone there because this is there's a number of games that i'm, I'm sort of entertaining looking at, at picking up for mm -hmm. the kids for christmas and so i'm going to board game bliss because i know they've got some great prices and you know i'm keeping an eye on on the new uh canadian deals page uh <laughs> but every time i go there i i look at you know hey let's just search up all the harry potter games 
and they have like one of them in stock. Yeah. And that's that's problematic. So Board Game Bliss is a shout out to them. Bosco at Board Game Bliss did sponsor us for Extra Life, mm -hmm. provided us with two gift cards to give away. And one of the people who won the gift card still hasn't used it. So Bosco actually wrote yesterday and asked, is there something wrong? And well, they're trying to get a game. They're trying to get Monster Factory because right. Stacy was there with her granddaughter playing it at Extra Life and loved it. And it's got a really good price, but it just, it's still not in stock. Yeah. So I don't know if like they, they need to clear their page more often. If it make, maybe they have more coming. I don't know. I personally have bought off them once over all the years. Um, my favorite online retailer in Canada for a long time was germangames.ca, which is now greatboardgames.ca. That's where I got a lot of my stuff. But for them, it was mainly because they had a very reasonable free shipping amount. So they worked out cheaper than Amazon most of the time. Yeah, no, it's 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 been unfortunate. But, uh, you know, again, they do have great prices, and I do like to support Can uh, Canada and buy Canadian yeah. when I can, if, if, they're, if it's reasonable. So, oh, I get it. Like, uh, we are both Canadian. I'll admit, most of my shopping is done on Amazon.com. But I live in a border city, so it's easy for me to get, well, easy, quote unquote, for me to get stuff shipped to the U.S. and get it over here to Windsor. But I, to be honest, I can't support Amazon.ca because their prices are terrible compared to .com. It is. You'd have to, I mean, there are, the amount of time you need to spend shopping on Amazon.com to find any deals on anything, uh, games especially not, but on yeah. anything, really. Now, what has been getting better is Indigo. Indigo.ca has been really good lately uh, for games, but wait for sales. They, yeah. they have sales. And the other thing is don't trust their MSRP. I don't know where they're yeah, pulling they're... their prices out of, but it's not where it should be coming from. Yeah, they're... And the other one, and here's the shocking one, all right? Here's the spoiler. But if you're going to take advantage of the spoiler, you got to go to our Canadian deals page and use the links because we are an affiliate, is Best Buy Canada. Best Buy Canada is the best place to buy board games in Canada right now. It's amazing. Best Buy Canada has Gloomhaven for under $100 Canadian right now and a bunch of other sales. They have Founders, I think, for like 30 bucks. It's crazy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, surprisingly, Best Buy is branching out a lot more. Now, one of the things you have to watch out when you're going to bestbuy.ca is uh, Bellhop uh, Best Buy does have a marketplace similar to Amazon's yes, marketplace. You may not be buying from and them. And yes. you need to pay attention just because there's a, a couple of times I've gone looking for electronics and hey, I need to go, I need to get something. And it's one of those, you know, I'm not going to Amazon because I need it like that day. So I'm, I'm looking for, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to, something I can pick up at a store and trying to find something that they sell in the store sometimes can actually be difficult because they are driving their marketplace really hard. And I and guess Best Buy does not look like the Best Buy I used to go to. So we, I oh, just no. went there Monday. <laughs> yeah, Monday. no, walking into Monday a Best Buy with my is mom weird. And I haven't been in in probably a year. I, I didn't even recognize the store. Like I wouldn't know where to buy a DVD in there now. I don't even know if you can. That used to, used to, oh, you always walked in. It was the walls of DVDs followed by the walls of audio stuff. And then on the left were the video games. And I'm like, I, I don't even know. Yeah, no, yeah, Best, Buy, Best Buy is just all over the it's place now. Weird. <laughs> like, it's weird. It's really weird. And they, and they, and they, 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 they rearrange things regularly. Like that's, yep. I, I, every once in a while, I'll walk into one and I'm like, oh, I have no idea where to go again. Yep. And that, yeah, that's, we were lost. That's a pain for me. I mean, I, I like some familiarity in a store. I mean, fine, you need to change things up. Great. But, I don't want to have to bug your staff about where stuff are all the times. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, online has games in store. They had some, I don't know. I didn't go look at the board game section. I meant to. Um, right. And yeah, support your local store. As long as your local store deserves it. I just, I don't agree with supporting a local store just to support your local store. Like yeah. if that, that your reason is, we need to have local game stores, so we must support them. No, I, I disagree with that. We can all meet up at a at a coffee shop or a bar or whatever to play games. I don't need a local store. But if your local store is a friendly local game store and does things to support the local community, then yes, please support your local store. Yeah, Especially absolutely. if they have good prices. We happen to have a store here in Windsor that has great prices, so it is worth supporting them. But yeah. I refuse to support a store that sells for more than MSRP and then pretends that they have lower advertised prices. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the the whole the whole local game store, uh, you know, FLGS thing. It's it's not an FLGS if they aren't doing anything for the community, if and if they aren't at least trying in some part to 
you know, make it make the deals worthwhile. You know, maybe they can't match prices from board game bliss, but if they are offering enough value add, then, you know, then it's willing to, because if you're going out and how many times do you end up, you know, selling board games because you're going out to that local store, you're running demos and people are saying, oh, this is a great game. I can walk across the, the floor and buy it right now. Yes. Um, which is just, you know, it's something you, you can't do with, with Amazon. Yes, exactly. No, there's so. definitely reasons to support local stores. But the hardest thing is that the local stores have a hard time knowing what the stock, which is difficult. We Again, we've mentioned this many times in the last year. Too many games come out. It's it's impossible to stock them all. Absolutely. So that's been, the, for me lately, the, well, lately I've been getting my games through other sources for, for working with companies to get review copies, which is awesome that we're now doing well enough that that works. But before then, it was I would go to get the game and they couldn't get it. So I had to go to other sources because I tried the local store. And I'm like, look, I want to get this game. Can you guys get it in? Have you got it in yet? Can you get it in? All right, I'll just go buy it online. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's 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 a tough uh, it's a tough thing for all. Um, so uh, jumping back into the chat room, uh, Poncho seventy two is asking if you will move to Ohio so that you can start up a local game group and have less travel distance to Origins. <laughs> less travel distance to Origins. I mean, our travel distance is bad. It's like what three hours? That's nothing. Yeah. That's it's not that bad. But no, because unfortunately, Ohio is in the United States of America. And no offense to our fans who live there. I love you. I'm not a huge fan of your country and some of its policies, especially in recent years. I, I am very happy living in Canada. I am proud of the country I live in and do not plan to leave it any time in my lifetime. Yep. Uh, now, <laughs> coming to visit, that might happen. So, Poncho, maybe we can hook up at Origins. It looks like we're going to be down there for an extended period of time. And despite, there, there's a topic we can talk about. We could talk about Origins and their hotel mess. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know how much of it is is Origins' fault and lack, or versus you know Origins' lack of communication uh, uh, clarity. It, it, on a positive note, Origins has gone above and beyond to apologize and correct the problem. They claim they didn't know, which is fine. But right. yeah. yeah, Origins registration went live the other day and sold out like almost immediately. But the site that you could buy the hotel blocks on were still showing rooms. And we're like, well, this is weird because we missed it. Like, we weren't ready at 10 a.m. when it right. should have happened. And, wow, it's weird. There's rooms. Okay, cool. We'll book a room. And while we're going to book a room, we noticed the same room, the same type of room at the same hotel, cheaper in another browser window. And we're like, wow, that's weird. And I'm not going to get into the whole detail, but it ends up that this hotel site they were using, once they sold out the blocks, then started listing affiliate links to Expedia. So all of the rooms they're showing there aren't theirs anymore, they're Expedia's. And when you get those, those are non-refundable, despite the fact that all the Origins newsletters and emails they sent us are all, you have 72 hours notice to cancel, no problem canceling. And with us this year, we really want to go uh, Tuesday to Monday, which is an extended period of time, but I don't know if we can afford to go Tuesday to Monday. So what we wanted to do was book a room Tuesday to Monday, and then when it gets closer, if we can't do the whole thing, we'll cancel Tuesday or whatever, right? Well, now it's non-refundable, and they've already charged us because we bought from Expedia, and there was no way to know that. There was no disclosure. There was no indicator. You were buying from anywhere except this site, on-site or on whatever. I can't remember what they're called. So we complained, and, and they already reversed the charges. They've already sent us emails. They already said they'll do what they can. But by doing that, we now have no room. So that's not a great solution either. Yep. So basically the site they were using basically bait and switched everyone. It looks like you were getting rooms from the Origins Hotel block, but they're just selling rooms in the local Columbus area. So it, it was a mess. Yeah. No, it's, it's unfortunate. And I didn't even know it was, I wasn't even anywhere near our computer. So I was, uh, I was right out. So yeah, we do have something now. So we got to figure out what Sean's going to do if he's coming this year too. Yeah, no, it's, I wasn't, I had no idea it was even coming up, so. Uh, maybe check out Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. I don't know, I'll talk to D off the air. Yeah, yeah. You might be able to hook we'll you figure up. figure out something. Um, alrighty. Uh, not too many questions, folks. Are we going to, uh, are we going to make I this know, a short a AMA? Any past Black Friday, Sunday, Mo Cyber Monday hot scores you can tell stories about? I almost want to put Deanna on the air for this one. <laughs> um, she could tell it better than I could. So one of the big sales that happens every year 
uh, that people look forward to is the Fantasy Flight holiday sale, which tends to go live. It, I don't they don't call it a Black Friday sale or whatever, but it tends to go live. And they will have stuff ridiculously cheap, like board games for five twenty dollars US. And these are like the big coffin board games. So one year this happens, and Deanna goes on and she buys me uh, Age of Conan. She bought me, I think it was Twilight Imperium third edition, but one of those big box games basically orders like three to four hundred dollars worth of games for eighty dollars US is is the final bill. Gets it shipped to Canada and is all happy. Like, oh my God, Mo's going to be, this is awesome. This is crazy. I mean, you got all these games coming. Because my birthday is also close to Christmas, right? So she was shopping for both at once. Well, it gets hit by Canadian customs. Fantasy Flight put on the full retail price for everything, even though we bought it on sale. And she ended up paying more in customs and duty fees than she paid for the games. It was like $120. It ended up costing her like as much as it would have cost just to go on Amazon and buy the games. It was insane. Right. So Fantasy Flight, amazing sale. And I'm sure they'll have another one this year because they do every year. Last year was the year I could have completed all my Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay collection because they had every single book dirt cheap, like two to five bucks each. But there's no way I'll ever buy off them again because they, for one, didn't mark it as a gift because this was a gift. They also put the full retail where it should have been the sale price. Like It was terrible. Like we got burned so bad on that one. Like that was we did not save money on that Black Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta say I don't uh, I don't do too much Black Friday sales, but or if I do, it's usually you know trying to see if there happens to be a decent electronic sale or something. But right. uh, there's good uh, ones every like like there's certain places that only do Black Friday sales like like Broken Token. Their inserts, they never put them on sale. But Black Friday, every year, they'll do 20 to 30% off. Right. And that is often stuff I get. Is, is Deanna will buy various box inserts. Because as we said many times, uh, not necessarily on the show, but I like to, I, like I say, for, for buying, it's really hard to buy for gamers. Because you never know what games they have. You don't know what expansions they have. You don't know what game's hot and they're excited about. You don't know what other people are going to buy them. You don't know what they bought themselves and so on. And it's just so much better to buy gamers stuff for the games they already have i personally think those are the perfect gifts for gamers so if you know your friend loves suburbia and brings it out every week and it takes you half an hour to set it up as he pulls out all his baggies get him the broken token insert for suburbia now all of a sudden suburbia comes out in minutes and now their game's more fun right or you get him the overlays for terraforming mars so the cubes don't slide stuff like that and that's what diana has been doing for me for years now like three or four years which has been pretty cool yeah, no, I have to say, I am definitely going to be keeping an eye on Maple Game Deals uh, because, again, I know there are a couple of games I, I'm i interested in this year, but I'm not paying MSRP for because, in, well, at least not in Canada, because uh, yeah. they're, they're pricey. There's, you know, some of the Harry Potter stuff uh, that I know my kids will want because, again, licensed games, still hot properties, yep. you know, it's, uh, they're, they're pricey. Um, but I've got them, you know, I've got them marked on Amazon for, for MSRP tracking and, yeah, yeah. We'll, that's about uh, all. We'll see how it goes. The Canadian deals are definitely harder to find than the U.S. deals. Yep. I, I get people complaining about that all the time. No, it, and it, it's true. I mean, you look at the two, you look at the two different pages on tabletopbellhop.com and you compare them, and yeah. there's no comparison. <laughs> yeah, the there list just of isn't. Stuff in the States um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. one of the one of the best deals on uh, out there right now is well, Sorcerer was a nice deal uh, yeah. in Canada, uh, but I mean, you know, Doctor Who Risk, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's you know, what tends to go on sale. That's the yeah. sort of thing that you're getting a lot of. Um, and it's, it's you know, it's just the market up here. Uh, it is what it is. But it's also, it's the distribution, it's the, the exchange rate, it's everything, right? Yep. From yep. what I hear, we have it way better than Australia. I, every, I get Australia well, yeah. complaining every now and then about how much they pay. Well, like I mean, that's, that's for everything, costing though. 80. I mean, everything in Australia. I mean, from TV to cell service to, you yeah. know, everything. It's just... Um, you know, they're they're on the wrong end of the world. Uh, All right, I got a question for you, Sean. Any games on your Christmas wish list? Uh, personally, I don't think so. I mean, I would still love to get the new uh, DC, but I haven't had it. the other ones on the table, so the it's kind of one of the new the rebirth. One? Yeah. Uh, but again, since I haven't gotten anything else on the, any of it on the table at all, it's sort of like, yeah, you know, we can wait. Um. The Dueling uh, Wizards Harry Potter one, which is the the sort of the the follow up to the Harry Potter's Hogwarts battle, uh, I'm interested in. It's a two player um, that looks interesting. Cool. Uh, and then there was one other new one. I'd have to open up my my uh, Amazon wish list and see 
what uh what it was but there's another there was another new newer harry potter game that came out that looks uh looks interesting enough and and could have some real uh table cool. value for the kids yeah we never even went through the original hogwarts battle we need to bring that one back out yeah well we never finished the the monster box because it got so difficult but uh i should i should i should probably do that again yeah uh, dan has been playing games with the kids we actually got um she took Big G and taught her Splendor and one of your favorites, Valeria Card Kingdoms. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was great. And then, then, and, and then, uh, Big yeah. G taught Little G uh, yeah, Splendor as well. Day. Yeah, yeah, the that next was awesome day we to see. Downstairs, and Big G was teaching Little G how to play Splendor. Yeah. Sounded like they were having a lot of fun. Well, I didn't play with them, so it's not in my week in review. Deep well, you're not a big Splendor fan, but I like Splendor, no. so uh, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. I don't um, mind Splendor. It's just I, I got sick of it quickly. I played a lot of it when we first got it. Yeah. For me, for Christmas, the main one, like, I don't, again, I don't, there's not a lot of board games I want because I'm trying to get them through other sources, and we still, we're finally getting to the end. We've almost played everything I got at Origins. We're almost done to the end of the review pile. I think March, I might actually get back to my own pile of shame by that point, <laughs> so we'll see. Um, but Tapestry, Tapestry just looks really good. That, that one's up there. I put that on the wish list. And Space Base, because... Every time I talk about Valeria now, everyone's like, "No, no, get Space Base. It's better." And I want to, I want to see if that's uh, if that's actually better. If it's if it's worth it. Right. Uh, what about the uh, what about the new Azul? The new hot. The new. Uh... I, you know what? I was so disappointed with Sintra that yeah. I'll try it first. I actually want to try it before I buy. Yeah, I like kind Sintra, of have to say... I, like I haven't gone back to Sintra. Like I yeah. had some fun with it when we first got it, but every time I'm going to pack for game night, I grab the original Azul. Yep. No, I, again, I I I enjoyed Sintra. It was a fun game, but it was just a fun game. I, yeah. I, I don't. I wouldn't say, um, you know, maybe it was because the original Azul came out first and we played it a bunch and, and you know, we got more yeah. used to it. Um, but it was just so much more involved in, in Sintra where it wasn't, it, it, it had the same sort of feel, but there was more effort to it. Whereas yeah, you play the original like Azul work. and it was a fun game, but you didn't have that work aspect, you know, mm -hmm. dealing with the, the scoring. All right, Boudet, RPG ass. Any yet to be released games you're excited about? I, you know what? I am so far behind on the hype train <laughs> right now. Like I, I'm finally catching up on podcasts because I've been spending a lot of time sharing early Black Friday deals, and it's something I can I can listen to podcasts while I'm doing that. And like I'm finally getting to hear about some games that were hot a while ago, and I'm like, oh, Valaprazio from from uh, Stronghold Games sounds really cool, and uh, Clans of Caledonia, man, that looks good. But like that that came out a while ago. As for uh, yet to be released, I said Tapestry looks really fantastic, but that's out now. I can't think of anything I'm actually like waiting for, but again, I'm not. I, I haven't been catching up to know what the the hotness is. Like, I would have to go to Board Game Geek, look at the hotness, and see if there's something there that I'd be excited about. Right. Is now Marvel Champions? I thought that was released. Oh no, it does say 2019. For some oh, reason. So. Yeah, no, for some reason it was saying 2020 in one place and then it changed over the, the, I can't to remember. This. They came out with the new Marvel miniature game and the new card game around the same time. Which one's right. that, the card game or the miniature game? The card game, game is, the, is the... Yeah, they were doing demos on Saturday when I was there, but I was doing demos of Cthulhu Death May Die, so I didn't get to see it. It's another living card game. I tend to avoid the living card games. Yep. Like, I get it. It's it's not magic, and I, I love the fact that you can just buy expansions, but I've yet to enjoy a single one of Fantasy Flight's living card games. I tried Netrunner and I just couldn't get into it. I tried the Star Wars one and I just couldn't get into it. We tried Legend of the Five Rings and it was kind of neat, but I just, I don't know what it is. And like back in the day, we loved magic and we loved Middle Earth, the Wizards, and we loved the Cypher Star yeah. Trek. And I don't know why I can't get into these new ones. Uh, the Great Wall is coming out soon, 2020. Uh, yeah, that's asymmetrical that. soldier placement engine building. Uh, that one oh. sounds like it's up your, uh, up your alley. Um, I don't know about theme wise, but uh, we're going nuts for Tainted Grail. Is that considered out yet? That I want to try because everyone's going so nuts about it. Uh, that I, uh, that's no, that's 2019, so probably yeah. out already. The only one on the hotness right now is the Great Wall. It's 2020. Everything else is is out. Spirit Island is on the hot list. Hot list right now. That's 2017. Probably an expansion coming or something. That's yeah, one maybe. I want to try. There's games uh, I want to play, but yep. I, there's not really anything I can think of this 2020. Like when we went to Origins this year, I had no clue. Like like I everyone was talking about that man's cabal. I didn't know until we right. got there, and I'm like, all right, cool. Marvel Protocol. That's the miniature game everyone seems yep. hot on. Yeah, I I have no real interest in picking up another miniature game either. So no, and then that's 
you know. I, like I got, I'm looking forward to uh, Eclipse, the new edition of Eclipse, but I already bought it. Like I bought it on <laughs> Kickstarter, and I want the dang thing to show up. Yeah, so that game looks great. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I had briefly been interested in that Titan game until we saw watched them <laughs> do the live play on. Uh, that was on Titan, Twitch. was it? That was something it wasn't, else. It was, yeah, it was Titans. Not it wasn't called Titan, but it was. They were. I mean, it, it's about the yeah. the Titan era of yeah the Titan era uh, myth of mythos and. Uh, it looked really interesting on the Kickstarter, but man, did it not show well on stream. No, that did not look good that at all. scared me a lot, and I was so glad I had time to pull my oh, money out. Oh, wait, I thought of one from 2020 I'm looking forward to. Back to the Future. Ah, uh, yes, the new Ravensburger. Because I... even very, the, the new Ravensburger licensed games have been great. Like, yeah. I haven't played Villainous, but everyone or not everyone seems to love it. Disney Villainous, I, Deanna even said it was pretty good, which is pretty good praise from her because it's not really her style of game. I've heard Villainous is great. I loved Horrified, as we talked about in the show last week. Jaws was pretty decent. I'm willing to give it another shot. Minecraft was good. I want to see what they do with Back to the Future. So there you go, Back to the Future. There's a game I'm actually looking forward to for next year. Yeah, I have to say, I am. I was not... I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of the Jaws game. Again, I enjoyed it. I had fun playing it, but it's not one that I would want to bother playing again. Uh, whereas Minecraft and Horrified... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll sit down and play Horrified again anytime. Um, I'm interested in trying it with, you know, the different monster combinations and different numbers of monsters. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's got something to oh, it. Oh, it's good. Uh, Minecraft. Um, yeah, again, it's it's got it's got a lot of thinky to it. I can I can definitely see myself probably getting tired of Minecraft before Horrified. Probably. Uh, but again, you know, it's a fun game and it's it's better for all ages, whereas Horrified mm -hmm. is, is more of a gamer's game. Uh, especially because of quarterbacking problems, right? If you've got an adult there, the kids are going to get a little less out of it, even if they are yeah. capable of playing. Yep. Um, but uh, no, they're they're definitely uh, shepherding licensed product well. Uh, yep. That that um, the house the the production house that's working on all those games. I'm trying to remember the name Prospero of it now. Prospero Hall. Prospero uh, Hall. I'm interested to know if they're the ones who are involved with the. Back to the future. Uh, Back to the future or not? Because if they are, I think that bodes well. Because they're the ones who did the villainous and and most of these new, um, mm -hmm. these new properties, and are they're really handling them well? Yeah, I've been very impressed overall. Really good. The Poncho seventy two asks, "Do we ever get a nice deal on a game at a thrift garage yard sale? Yard sales, definitely. Um, mostly RPG stuff. We've got net yard sales over the years." Often whole collections. I remember Deanna had found one at the end of the street somewhere and like called me. This is before the cell phone days. And was like, oh my God, this guy's got all this D&D stuff. And he used to do art for magic and he has all this stuff. That one was really good. But for actual thrift stores and board games, the only thing I have ever found was the Marvel Heroescape, which Heroescape now goes for crazy money. But that was the, the miniature game that came with hex, plastic hex tiles. And the original Heroescape was like, you had a mixed match. So you'd have like, robots fighting samurai fighting germans or whatever all in one game and it worked and well they put out a marvel version which was all marvel characters and marvel villains and it was compatible it all used the same system and i found that for three bucks and it was complete when i opened it up it actually had some bonus hero clicks in there so someone was obviously using some hero clicks as other marvel figures in it so that's the one like of all the time of all the times i've looked rpg books like we found ad and d copies ad and d and stuff like that but we just used to buy them to either trade them to other people or sell them. I've never, like, it wasn't stuff I wanted, but, like, you go to, like, Value Village and be like, hey, a player's handbook for five bucks for AD&D, and I'll pick it up, and I'll throw it in the RPG book exchange, or we'll throw it in the Extra Life auction or something like that. But board games, the only one ever. Like, I, I have never, people share online all the great games they found. The one time, Marvel Heroescape, that was it for me. Yeah, I, I, I haven't, I haven't really been a yard sailor in years. Um, I, it's just not something I really ever enjoyed going out and doing the the bargain hunting thing so um, i know tech just found some wooden bowls yes yes we <laughs> saw awesome. those we shared that in the winter gaming resource yeah we saw those absolutely i saw that i'm like tech found wooden bowls that's what i look for when i go to thrift stores yeah i look for more wooden bowls because 12 is still not enough to play um i need enough to be able to play the colonists there you go, there you go. all right are we uh all right jeff seuss what game do you own that you have wanted to play forever, but no one will play with you? Oh, there's so many of those. Um, RPGs, definitely. Dungeon Crawl Classic. Jeez, I've been trying for two years now. <laughs> we just can't get that dang group together to actually do it. Uh, board games, 
<laughs> the Star Wars stuff. Star Wars Armada, Star Wars X-Wing. I know there's a local community here in Windsor, but going out and having to cart my stuff to the local game store to play with these people who play very competitively isn't doesn't sound that appealing to me. I'm like, I want someone to just come to my house and play some X-Wing and Armada. I don't get enough use out of that. Um, Imperial Assault's almost the same thing, but that's the same group that we're playing DCC. <laughs> so we used to be able to get together to play Imperial Assault until someone switched afternoon shift and that campaign fell apart. I kind of like to restart that one. And then there's the, the heavy games, right? So it's Deanna and I. I can never get people to play like Food Chain Magnate or Indonesia. Deanna will play them, but they're not good two-player. And it's not often we can get people out who want to play those heavier games. We can get the heavy-ish games, right? Like, like Vinhos being like close to the top. But like once you get past Vinhos, I have a real hard time getting a group together to play. Yeah, I have to say there's not too much. Uh, I mean, board game wise, there's nothing I've got really that that I can't get to the table because the kid, you know, I buy games basically based on what my kids want to play mostly. Yeah. Uh, RPGs, absolutely, because I don't play anything RPGs. I I got a bunch on the shelf that never get played because I just I just don't RPG anymore. Uh, other than other than a bit of online uh, game, I can I when I can manage to to find them. Uh, next now, up, tech, tech, yeah, Texas, eighteen twelve, yeah. Canada. I've got that one. It's a great game. It's just best with five people, so you got to find five people who are willing to play. Right. But I and I, I I totally get where he's coming from though. He's saying it looks so boring at first blush, right? 1812 yeah. Invasion of Canada doesn't sound like a great game. Now, understandably, I understand it's supposed to be actually a fantastic game. Uh, yeah. again, not necessarily my cup of tea, but uh, just again, it's one of those games that you know you've got to you've got to hook someone to uh, hook someone on uh, and get them playing it for them to understand it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I find it draws people in once it's set up and you're playing. But yeah, just looking at the box. Yep. Now, Deanna is noting that we bought Hero Quest in French, which I have behind me, but we bought that in an antique mall and we paid 50 bucks. Uh, to me, that's not a thrift find. 50 bucks for Hero Quest is a deal, but that's not like a $3, $5 thrift find to me. All right. Uh, text asking, what are the game accessories you can't live without? Well, I know one thing that you can, that I'll, I'll, I'll answer for you, and okay. that is your tabletop mats, your, your yeah. sticky mats. Uh, that's Those the one awesome. unbeatable uh accessory that you know no board gamer or even any gamer really should should go without yeah and all it is a shelf liner yeah you, you buy a shelf liner a drawer liner yeah now you gotta be careful though because some people shelf liner is the paper the sticky paper yeah it, this is which is not this is this is a thicker rubbery rubberized i don't know it's like foam yeah stuff. It, it looks a little bit like um like a um a screen but mm. it's it's not even it's not you know it's not a regular line it's the kind of a a, a, a screen that went wrong Ooh. and his phone yeah, is like foam. Said, drawer liner shelf liner i've seen it called different things you can buy it at the dollar store i buy yeah. it at canadian tire because i trust the quality a little better yeah well, the that... entire, and i tend to cut them in half like uh because they're pretty big so all of mine are actually sheets that have been cut in half um the bowls like something it doesn't have to be bowls but something to hold components Every time I go to the local game store to run a game night and I forget the bowls, I'm frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, I hate piles of resources on the table, yep. getting all mixed up. I love having bowls. Um, but yeah, the non-slip mats are huge. Um, I don't know. Nothing, nothing's totally, like, can't live without. Nothing's can't live without. All of them. The only game accessory I can't live without is players to play the games. <laughs> <laughs> but but as far as that, um, I said the bowls are definitely a good one. That, those are the main ones. Uh, and and uh, we, we we know who the RPG player is because uh, Jeff's can't uh, live, live without accessory is blank business cards and a sharpie. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> that's it. Which is a, a very RPG uh, accessory, not not yeah, something that comes up too often in board cards, games. Uh, business cards, index business cards, a little small. I would go with index cards. Well, for business cards, I I prefer like a fine a fine point felt tip pen rather than a yeah. sharpie. But uh, yeah, sharpie and index index cards. Oh, totally fair. All right. All right. We got anything else? I think that might be everything. We got anything on Twitter? Or anything anyone's I, asked? I've actually in the chat room. I've saw nothing. Nothing they've tagged me on in Twitter. So All right. I do understand it's a holiday weekend for most people. So yep. totally fair. I have seen I'll a lot of a fair number of watchers today, which is pretty cool. So it's your last chance. We'll give you like five minutes or so to uh, get a question in. Uh, dice trays are nice. Again, I don't. I don't find them must have. But like, man, when we're playing sorcerer. Oh, Sorcerer yeah. needs a dice tray. That is one board game we found 
that, that we need a dice tray. And yes, I know Ryan has a question out there, but what's the best dice tray? But I own one that I got a review copy from Easy Roller Dice, and I love it, but it's the only one I've tried. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have to compare that to box lids. So I can't give you a really good answer there, Ryan, until I get some more. I have so if to any say, companies out there do dice rollers and they want to send them to me to review, I'd, I'd love to do a compare. I have to say, the looking, look at, snap together. looking at the, uh, looking at, looking at people RPGing these days, I have to say back in the day, I wish I had had a dice tower to roll in. Um, yeah. I, you know what? I, it's a containment thing, right? So many times, you know, there's just so many dice rolling yeah. dice going around. Whereas, you know, a nice dice tower where you just grab your dice and drop them in just keeps everything nice and and, and keeps your, your player area smaller and tighter. And I gotta say, I kind of like that. The noise problem I can see, but you can get the felt line ones, so you can deal with the yeah, noise. I, I, we got, I wanted a dice tower for a while, and then they had them for tabletop day. One of the ones when Will Wheaton was still involved. And I got the Meeple dice tower, and I was all excited to bring it home. And I used it one night and I hated it. And I don't even know why. It was just like a pain having to pick the dice up and drop them in. And then it often was in the way. So you had to turn it to actually see the results. Mm -hmm. And it just, it was more fuss. I'm like, it's much easier to roll on the table, That's fair. which is why I like the dice tray. So like right. you're still rolling into something. So you're still constrained. Yeah. You I, don't well, I mean, that dice tray, dice tray would work as well, I guess. All really. Through. And I, people like them. Like I know Wingspan even comes with one. And supposedly they're more random. So I've never been one to think people are really cheating with their die rolls in my house. Uh, here's that one from Boudet RPG. Product license that you want to see a good board game made for. <laughs> this will piss some people off. Dune. I, that, that was my answer. You know what? Oh, that's you absolutely <laughs> what I was going to say. I'm like, uh, I want to see a good Dune game that's not the 1970s Avalon Hill trading AP stab your friends in the back. You know what? The, and I, the, I suspect we are going to get one. We When this, when the new film series comes you know when we when we when we get to uh when, when we get to this new this new you know uh generation of dune yeah. i suspect it will reinvigorate the property and we will probably see new games based on it depending on how the licenses roll out That's what always... i would love to see is an updated version of the starcraft board game or forbidden stars done as dune with the different factions where it's more like the old dune real-time strategy game that was on the computer right. where you yep. have to send your spice harvesters out and yep. your ornithopters and explore. I would love to see like a 4X Doom is what I would like to see. I'd love to see a licensed RPG too that isn't the Lost Unicorn game that died before it was released. Right. Uh, what else? Um, uh, Deanna mentions Labyrinth. Yes, Labyrinth Dark Crystal because the company that got it did such a bad job. Yeah, we, we, we need to erase, Crystal, so we need to erase those Crystal, games. But I've heard. We I need to like, erase those games from the from the, the memory with something of quality. I, I would love to see a good Labyrinth game, though I don't know what I'd do with Labyrinth, like what you would what you would do with it as a board game to make it more interesting that wouldn't just be Talisman or something where you're yeah. wandering the board and eventually you'll unlock a new spot. Yeah, I mean it's it's almost a roll and move. I mean, you know, the game of but, life turned into <laughs> labyrinth. Is it, uh, talisman is it just changed yeah. the ending, so it's Jareth instead of the Crown of Command, and you got your labyrinth board game. Yeah, you know, yep. you're no, in a absolutely. maze instead. Just change the names. Just re, re, re theme all the the spots. Speaking of which, they just released. Uh, they they did it. Batman Talisman. I had no idea. Hmm. It's Batman Talisman. You're the villains, and you're in Arkham, and you're trying to escape. And the middle spot is the door to get out. And I'm like, wow, that's quite the re-theme. All right. Uh, what else do we have for licensed? Um, someone asked, what is a good cyberpunk board game? Uh, there's a couple that I liked. So City of Remnants looked pretty neat. I need to give it another try. It was trying to do too many things at once. So it's Plot Hat Games, so they're good at making games. Deck building was still pretty new. And it's like they tried to throw in um, city building and putting out territories, polyominoes on a board, area control with grid attacks, like um, not battleship, but like uh, where you're like roll two coordinates for something to happen with deck building. And I got to admit, when I first tried it, it was overwhelming, but I have played a lot more games since, and especially deck building mechanic I'm used to. So I'd like to give that another try. I personally thought Android was really neat. It was basically a Philip K. Dick novel in a board game format, but it's long. It was way too long. Uh, you were trying to solve a murder mystery, and there was hacking. Like, it had all the tropes. It had You had your flying cars, and people's cars flew at different amounts, and all your characters had a dark secret, and their dark secrets could come out. If you want, like, 
a cyberpunk experience in a board game, Android would would be my number one recommendation. But man, you gotta it's it's a game night game. You have to you have to you have to expect to play it. And they had like a really good mechanic for determining who the murder mystery was partway through the game. So you didn't know, like, but like so you couldn't cheat. You couldn't there wasn't clue, right? It wasn't right. predetermined at the beginning. It was somewhat driven by what players did. And part of the game that was a problem is someone could pay to assassinate one of the possible people and someone could assassinate your suspect. And then you seem like you were kind of out of the game. That one was right. neat. Uh, okay. What do we got here? Uh, on board game night, how do you decide what to bring? I uh, personally, it's, it's a mix of what I'm excited about, what I've seen other people ask me they want to play. So it's uh, lately it's what I want to get reviewed, right? So games I need to do reviews on. So I bring out it's work, right? Like there are games I need to play. So I bring those out and it's just the buzz, right? So I go out to an event and while we're talking at the event, someone's like, oh, I really want to try that. I make a little mental note in my head to bring out next time. And then a mix of casual, easy to play games for new gamers. So I will always grab like an Azul, Gokuku, Splendor, Gizmos, um, Sagrada, those types of games. So I just have them on hand so that if I do show up to a game night and there's new people there, I have games that are accessible to play for new people. I used to, back in the day, it used to always be Bonanza, Catan, and Carcassonne was what I brought to every event. Nowadays, I mix it up more and I'll switch it. I'll be like, oh, I haven't brought Azula for a couple weeks and I'll bring that. Oh, I haven't brought Gizmo for a couple weeks. Oh, gokuku has been coming out almost every night since I got it, though, because that one's just so much fun. Uh, and how do you bring your games to uh, to the store? <laughs> uh, mostly uh, milk crates. We were lucky enough to have a ton of milk crates uh, back in the day. Deanna and I have made a table out of them in our first apartment where we just put a sheet over the milk crates. Uh, we have a lot of milk crates, and milk crates are perfect size for that standard ticket to rise size box. They can lay flat, and then the other size boxes I stand up. Um, every now and then I'll use banker boxes because I recently got a bunch of games that are way too big to fit in milk crates, which annoys me. Uh, Vinhos being one of them, Tyrants of the Underdark being another one. I'm like, no, stick to the standard size boxes, people. Like that, that is something I wish the gaming industry would do was standardize their box size. I wish there was like a small board game box, a medium board game box, and a big board game box. It'll never happen. But and unfortunately, bankers boxes, uh, depending on how heavy the game is, those handles don't always uh, support yeah, don't, a lot of they weight. Don't, they don't so need. not not great. That actually happened with their extra life. Yep. Uh, yeah, milk crates are awesome. If you can get your hands on some milk crates, like I said, they literally your your standard board game box, you're gonna be able to fit three to four games and still be able to stack the milk crate. What I usually do is two of those and then the odd size excuse me, boxes I stand up. Now, Poncho asked a question that says he doesn't watch enough of our Gloomhaven streaming because Poncho uh, is asking, do you ever try to play some themed background music or sound effects while gaming? Yes, actually. Uh, we used to do that all the time. So whenever we had game night, we used to put on Spotify. But then I decided to go independent and do this full time. And we can't afford subscription services anymore. And the advertisements drive me nuts. So it used to be literally we would sit there and, and we did a whole episode on this, actually, uh, about theme game nights that pretty much if you go into Spotify and search for a game, you will find a soundtrack. Like you can put Terraforming Mars soundtrack and someone will have made a playlist and you will put Azul soundtrack and someone will have made a playlist. Like it's kind of shocking that people have taken the amount of time that there are bands that are dedicated enough to put these together, but they're there and we would still use them. It was literally anytime we sat, we play music, but now we also stream a lot of our games and we can't play licensed music while streaming games. So that's a problem. Uh, plus ads like it, it, I gotta admit hearing an ad in the middle of a game does bring me out of the game. It depends on the game we're playing. It's something like Azul. I don't mind being brought out, but if we're playing something thematic, it's like, oh, now I got to grab my phone and skip the ad or mute it, and it drives me nuts. And sometimes some of those streaming services have a lot of ads a lot of often, but not only that, they're the same stupid ads over and over, and that's what drives me the nuts the most. Now, for Gloomhaven, what I use is tabletop audio, which is free to use. It's, it's non-licensed music or it's licensed with a, you're allowed to use it for streaming. Uh, tabletop audio is fantastic. It does music and ambiance and sound effects for background noise. And it's something I've been using from back when I used to run Warhammer third edition. I used it and used the tavern sounds and I used the travel sounds. And now I use that for Gloomhaven and I theme it based on the scenario we're doing. So if we're in the sewers, I use the sewer one if we're in the cistern. I use the cistern one. So like when we did um, the playthroughs on the weekend, 
when Kat was doing her, she was in a forest. So I found a forest soundtrack that just has like birds chirping and forest sounds. So yes, I love to have sound in the background. Absolutely. Uh, and so I, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to be mean to you there. Uh, <laughs> Pancho, yeah. Pancho, we, not, not everyone, not everyone loves to sit around and watch other people play board games for hours on end. And Gloomhaven oh. is a, is a lengthy one. We've got some, we've got some hardcore fans who really do enjoy it and know the game and help out. And there are, are folks in the chairs who are yes, awesome we, and much have, appreciated. Temujin and here. the gang. Uh, we, we, uh, we, we love having them around, but it is definitely not for everybody. There's no question about that. Yeah, um, we, we have some fans of our Gloomhaven stream, which is pretty awesome. I've been told that they, you don't hear the background audio on the stream. It's but I pretty, don't... Uh, lately, it has been being picked up uh, for a while. I had no idea you were doing it. Yeah. Uh, but in the past month or so, I've been noticing it. Uh, I'm yeah. in, able to hear. So, Fortune and Glory, a CD for background. That's cool. We used to do CDs for background for a while. Yep. We were playing something the other day, and we broke out the pirate shanties. I can't remember what we were playing that required pirate shanties, but we broke them out. That horrible game with the, moving your cell phones on the board? No, that wasn't <laughs> it. I think I sold that. Endeavor. Uh, there you go. We were playing Endeavor, Age of Sail. Ah, uh, there you That's go. Why we put out the pirate shanties on that one the other day. Those are not safe for, for work pirate shanties. <laughs> are are any pirate shanties safe no, for work unless you're a pirate? Ones. These uh, are supposedly authentic pirate shanties. And right. They're pretty vulgar. All righty. All right. It's almost 1030. I think at this point we've answered some questions. Thank you very much. Everyone who asked questions. We're a little slow there for a bit in the middle, but everyone stepped up. Uh, I, we got a pretty good crowd in the room. I'm pretty happy by the way this turned out by the end. So thank yeah, you okay. everyone for your questions. Again, we will be doing this again, maybe, because let's see. Yeah, we're probably not doing an AMA in December. No, probably it, not. It is unlikely. I, I'm up for doing it, but I don't think Sean's going to be up for doing it. Well, I'm, I'm up for doing it. I don't think we're going to have anyone else around yeah. because no, of the No date. one's going to join us Christmas yeah. Day. We'll have yeah. a Christmas Day AMA. Come on, it rhymes. Hey. Christmas Day AMA. We might do it. There's a chance. Yeah. There's a chance we'll <laughs> be streaming on Christmas. Because by then, our kids should be in bed. Like, what else are we going to do go. Christmas Day at 9 o'clock at night? <laughs> All <laughs> right. Know. Well... well that's it for this week's Ask the Bellhop segment. If you'd like to read more gaming and game advice, be sure to check out the blog at tabletopbellhop.com and click on Gaming Advice. Uh, if you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or email me at questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 